remote learning coming to your town soon. Now you might be saying, I'm sitting here in the middle of New York City, but let me tell you what's going on here. And a reminder, warrior, that whatever happens in New York, New York is considered a leader state as well as California. So we have to keep an eye on everything that goes on here in New York, everything that goes on in California, especially regarding the education system. Now hear me out about this one. On June 6th, the New York City public school system said they were doing a a voluntary program for all of the parents and guardians of children ages K through 12 to brush up on the online, the remote learning, because they tried this in February and they said, you know, we had a lot of disasters. I know firsthand from working with parents or parents who have called me uh, directly involved with this. Back in February, I was told, well, parents let me know this is due to, we have such extreme weather these days, you know, with all this climate talk, such concern over that, but not our actual education of our children, but I'll leave that for a minute. Uh, that they wanted to prepare for a snow day. And indeed, what happened is many parents told me the system went down. This is back in February. They could not log on. It was a disaster. And this was a mandatory session back in February. And then they were told, you know, everything, it's not like the old days, you get a note, you get a handout to bring home. Everything is done. You communicate everything online now. That's been going on probably the last, oh, maybe close to 20 years Um, But certainly in the last five years, all the communication between school, parent, guardian, it's all done online. So a lot of these parents also reported to me that their child in February, when it was mandatory, were marked absent for that day when indeed they had to say, no, we were there. We could not log on or we logged on and we got kicked off. It was a disaster. Fast forward to June 6, 2024. Parents were notified a couple of days before you know, we're going to uh, give you the day off and we're going to have a voluntary session of remote learning, of online. We're going to work out the kinks. My sources tell me, let me tell you about this. First of all, my sources tell me that due to the influx of illegal alien children, and I'm going to call them that because remember, these are people with their children breaking in through our front door, right? not coming here legally. So let's let's not mince the words anymore. Let's call it what it is. We know what's going on. Uh, we want people to come here legally. We want people to come here the way I know so many great. I spent, I spent the afternoon with somebody today who came here and worked hard 30 years ago to become an American, fought to be an American. The minute she got here, she started working. There were no handouts for her or her family. And we also work with immigration attorneys that tell us it takes seven, eight, nine years for somebody to become an American. They assimilate. They want to learn the American way of life. So people just marching in, I'm going to call it what it is, Uh, especially being right here in New York City and being confronted on a daily basis on the streets with all kinds of things. But, um, and don't give me that, you know, I should leave New York because this is my uh, city and I'm here to fight for it. And there's nothing like New York City and there's no way we should allow this. So I'm here to stay. So besides that, uh, what happened is I am told from my sources, there are so many illegal alien children in the school system that although they are masking this, the education department, under the the uh, guise of climate so bad, we might ha- have bad weather alert days. We might remember in our day, it was, you know, a snow day, maybe, because I went to school in Catholic school uniform skirt with like rubber boots. Like we didn't even wear pants in those days. And we, we made it on snow days. It would have to be up to my waist before they thought about giving a day off in New Jersey. But I digress. And so New York has been always traditionally, they don't give snow days because they, the thinking used to be that children live in their neighborhoods and can walk down the block or a couple of blocks to school. So mandatory is, and still is 180 days of school. That is the curriculum. And my sources are telling me because of all this, the influx of children, the classrooms cannot hold, nor do they have the staff to teach. Now, we used to talk about, mm, I'm going to say 20 years ago, even though, you know, if it was 30 something in a classroom, that's too much. How can kids learn when there's that many kids in the class? They've also recently come up with, they didn't seem to mind, people just talked about it. 
They also came up with lately, um, by the year 2025, I believe, that classrooms are going to be no more than 20 to 25 children. Now, again, stay with the train of thought. So we have remote learning because bad weather, that could be because of the climate change, extreme heat days. Now, you and I both went to school in extreme heat, and I I dare say this was in the days before they have air conditioning because schools have air conditioning now. Uh, But we might have extreme heat days. They don't really even mention snow too much. It's about the the heat. And uh, uh, so we we might not be able to attend school. Um, now we're going to have these mandatory by 2025 and it's already starting because 40% of the schools have signed up for this for the coming 24, 25 school year, uh, the 20 to 25. So I don't know if a classroom has 50 kids now, how do you accommodate 20 to 25? Well, they went back to a couple of different things. Hear me out. They went back to, let's use some other rooms. Uh, let's use the lunchroom now as a classroom. Let's use the gymnasium as a classroom. It's bad enough that most schools have cut out arts and uh, physical fitness for kids and music. Remember music class? You'd go in, sing a couple of songs related to Columbus Day, Christmas. They'd throw in a Hanukkah song, uh, spring songs. Mm, No more. Very little of that. Again, edging towards this remote learning. And I hear it's hybrid. So they're thinking right now, We're going to stagger. We're going to have kids start early. Again, this is what I'm hearing. We're going to have kids start very early in the morning. You know, it could be 7 o'clock. It's tough enough, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as early as 6.30. It's tough enough to get kids to go to school at 8 o'clock. Get them out of bed, get them ready, get them dressed. If you work, you have to get ready for work. Uh, Everybody out the door, homework, all this stuff. And um, you might do that two days a week. And then the other three days a week, again, I'm hearing this. You will have to be at home, remote learning. Hmm. How is this going to work, this hybrid? Remember, since COVID, it's always a hybrid situation. Um, How is this going to work when it's a single parent household and the mom or dad has to go to work? How about both parents work? How exactly are you going to leave a second grader, as an example, at home doing remote learning without an adult in the house? I don't see anybody talking about this. I don't see, and when I ask my sources, they're like, oh, there's no talk, there's no discussion about that. We, we don't know. Okay. And also, this is the most mind-boggling thing. There will be no opting out by the parents. Therefore, the child is the one that consents to doing this. Again, we're leaving that in the hands of a kindergartner, first, second, third grade. How about a teenager who just doesn't like school? And they say, oh, well, I'm, I'm in for this. I just got to go two days. I'm going to work three days at home. We learned during COVID and teachers were not allowed to ask. Students would put their government issued Chromebook. They would sign on and in their little block, you know, for the classroom, there's nobody there but their name. They could be in the other room watching TV. They could be sleeping. They could go outside. And teachers, I I was told, were not allowed to ask. That was discriminatory, uh, all kinds of things. So they never knew if the student was there or not. Obviously, if if assignments weren't turned in, or uh, they even told me they would say sometimes referring to the child, uh, as an example, um, little Susie, could you tell us about, and they'd hear nothing. But again, they were not allowed to question. There's also this misnomer I keep uh, reading. It was always traditionally said in the New York City public school system, a million children in the education system. Now, I, again, heard right after COVID, many kids just didn't come back. The real figure right now is around 915,000. Yet articles I'm reading and research is suggesting like something like 1.1 million children. Hmm. I heard kids just never came back after COVID of all ages. Now, we know a lot of people moved out of the city. Um, Also, kids went to other charter schools, other private schools maybe a Catholic school. So you have to account for some of them. But for argument's sake, a million kids just disappeared. So we have that going on. But I am telling you, there is a push. There is a push. And I heard about this all in the COVID period. We're eventually going remote. And they are rolling this out right now. This is staggering when it is not, it is not uh, 
it proved so detrimental to our children, this system. And on top of it, when they had this voluntary day on June 6th here in New York City, many, and it's sponsored by IBM. Remember them? IBM. It crashed. So it didn't work again. And they said, well, it crashed because um, we didn't have the bandwidth. I'm kind of paraphrasing here. We didn't have the, whatever they call these things, okay? Excuse me. This is New York City, mandatory. But you're talking about, they say, the New York City Public School, we have a million kids. You don't have the bandwidth. Well, we didn't know that many would volunteer to try our, our online system. Again, it crashed. So this city is indeed in no way prepared for hybrid learning. What about families? What about your working? How is this going to work? Who's going to be watching the kids? Who's going to be watching the kids? And the thing I find most staggering is nobody's asking those questions. Where are our leaders? What is going on here? I have no doubt in the 2024, 2025, Definitely moving into 2025-2026 school year, hybrid learning will become the norm. And that is being masked. It's not about the climate. It's because we have so many illegal aliens coming to our cities. Now remember, I've always told you this, and I have a lot of reports just recently. What happens in New York will eventually come to your town. People are reporting to me in different towns in New Jersey and Connecticut. They're seeing a lot of these people. Who wants to stay here? It's hot. And you can get a bus ticket, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, you're on your way. Well, I don't know how many are going to Delaware. I'll leave that for a second. Uh, I was going to say something else, but I'll leave that. But we have to question all of this. And the other thing, before I let you go, is government-issued Chromebooks. We learned during COVID that, sponsored by Google, no safety features were turned on, explained anything, okay? That is when the parents, if anything good came out of that period, if anything good came out of it, parents saw because hackers could so easily hack into the math, the science, whatever the kids were doing online for school and download porn or images or say things or distract the kids with dialogue. We saw that. We saw that the kids were easily accessing porn. And it was shocking. These are government issued devices. Why not put, you know, the safety features on for the parents before you give them out? Certainly with a code, the parent could undo. And we know kids are savvy and can undo stuff, but at least it would have shown some sort of, we care for the kids, we care for the families, we're gonna help them out here. Not only that, in New York City, if your Chromebook is stolen, broken, uh, you lose it. We have so many cases of kids who cannot get, legitimate cases of kids who cannot get another Chromebook. Therefore, they are, what are they doing? Teachers are doing a lot of these lessons online, right? No more textbooks. It's going to all be online. They have to use their phones. You know how difficult it is to do actual stuff on a phone like can you imagine going to school on your phone we have a case of a straight a student young woman uh eighth going into ninth grade now never a problem her chromebook was stolen off her desk during the school day when she went to the girls room now nobody saw it in the classroom the teacher was there might be a good Good case for cameras now uh, in the classrooms if they're not already there. Where did her Chromebook go? She can't get her Chromebook back, okay, and is doing it on a phone, okay, which leads me to internet should just be free for everybody, right? I think you can agree with that. But here's the here's here's the problem with doing things on phones. Not only is it difficult, not only is it ridiculous. If you have a great student, the Chromebook was stolen, you replace that. We have Gov Governor Kathy Hochul, and it's something we fully support, getting phones out of the classrooms so the kids can socialize, they can learn, they can make contact with the teacher. How are you going to do that if your government-issued Chromebook has been stolen? It's lost, it's broken, and you have to use your phone in the classroom to do the assignment. None of this makes sense. So I ask you, I know it's only, you know, 4th of July weekend, 
September will roll around before you know it. We have to be armed with information. We have to keep thinking about what's going on behind the scenes because while we are, and I want everybody to have fun and relax a little bit over the summer and swim and talk and bake and read books and, and just you know take care of the pets and go for car drives, whatever. We've got to think about this because again, September will be here before you know it. And this is when they slip things in because you haven't had your eye on the ball. So look out hybrid learning they're calling it hybrid learning it sounds so you know great i guess because they want their traditional five day a week classroom done with and it's not because it's not because of weather and it's not because of class size which they don't explain how the class sizes are exploding but we know because of all these illegal aliens just coming into our country and in our classrooms. It's our taxes. It's your taxes. It's everybody's taxes. It's a burden on our children. It's a burden on these children who there are not enough translators for. A lot of them just sit there. A lot of them just sit there because they don't understand. It's sad all the way around. So be on the lookout. Please, please be safe. Be well. You're going to have a great summer. Hug your kids. Tell them They are wonderful. A reminder that the Lost Voices of Fentanyl Rally is in Washington, D.C. next Saturday, uh, July 13th, beginning at 10 a.m., goes straight through to 7 p.m. Lots of speakers, heartbreaking parents who have lost children and family members to fentanyl. It's poison flowing freely over our borders. Talk to your kids. Tell your kids, if you didn't get that pill, that medication from a pharmacy, you cannot take it. You cannot take uh, an aspirin from your friend, okay? Because upwards of 85 to 90% of all illicit opioids are cut, including marijuana with the kids vaping and smoking, are cut with fentanyl. It's poison. It's not a drug. It's poison. It's the poisoning of America, the poisoning and killing of our children. So we've got the uh, Lost Voices rally happening and at 4 p.m we will be marching with a police escort over to the white house showing pictures thousands upon thousands of pictures of dead children change must occur do what you can lost voices of fentanyl lvof.org thank you for following the warriors thank you for signing up for newsletters reading them sharing them following twitter facebook instagram whatever it is every number counts everybody counts information counts donations of course count volunteer when we announce which is very soon we're gonna have something up in the bronx uh a food and book giveaway it all counts thank you always for following believing in us the goal is to educate you to help you but remember whatever's happening in my hometown of new york city new york state is coming is coming to you soon be on the lookout remote learning start digging around dig deeper Remember, community creates change. And remember also, each and every day, go out and be a warrior.